It's me, Zenobia Darling. You're listening to Hashtag Rockstar Life, the Coffee Break Podcast. Let's go. Where the hell's my cold brew at? One check. All right. We're live. What's up? Okay. It's me, Zenobia Darling. Oh, I've beamed God. down with one of my good friends. Probably one of my best friends. Oh. Yeah. We are in a hotel room in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Yeah. It's a Friday night, and I made you watch Vanderpump Rules. That's right. So That's welcome right. to the podcast. Thank you. Thank Davey you, Calico. Thank you. Davey Calico. An amazing, an amazing dude, an Aww. amazing human. Thank you. A sexy man. We'll edit yeah. that out. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a pleasure to be here, Derek. I really yeah. have enjoyed your podcast and the yeah. people we've had on it. It's insight um, into the hip small town culture. Yes. I have to say, you're like, I've had many people in our friend circle and everyone said, you got to have Davey on. <laughs> really? Yeah. Stoney said that. Said that. Yeah, Jenny so. said that. Okay. So this will come out around Christmas, okay, but cool. Like, so by the time this comes out, Jenny's episode will come out. Okay. But like, yeah. So how are you tonight? How are you today? I'm really good today. You know, it's Black Friday, 2023. This is 14 years after I separated from my first wife. Oh, wow. We're yeah. getting some deep history. <laughs> yeah, it's true. And, you know, that was a monumental moment in my life because I, I broke away from what I would say was traditional mainstream culture then and i i started a tradition of buying a new outfit and going to a strip club every black friday um Ooh. didn't didn't go to a strip club today because i'm spending it with you mm-hmm. zenobia darling well, zenobia but, is part stripper <laughs> yeah yeah <true. laughs> but i did go to a strip club last um last week and the the guy there told me that there's some gettysburg spares yeah there's a lot of stuff yeah there. i feel it i mean we we didn't ghost hunt like in a stereotypical ghost hunting way but so we got up here. We just kind of both were bored. And it's like, let's go. I have a bunch of Hilton points that we use. So we're at a nice Hilton hotel room. And like we came up here. We were trying to find like someplace to eat. Santa was coming in town. There's a bunch of people. <laughs> Santa was in Davey town. got to see me be a mess because I hate crowds. Oh, that was true. That so, was anxiety. Yeah. So we like walked around. All the damn Asian restaurants were close. Today. All of them. I know. You'd think it was Chinese New Year. Yeah. Was it, isn't it a holiday? Like yeah, I, it the noodle wasn't. place? Well, the Thai place? I mean, Diwali was recently, but that's, that's an Indian. Indian thing. Yeah. And, and these weren't Indian. I don't know. Spots. That's nuts. Know. Yeah. But then, so we went to a coffee shop. Yeah. And what is it called? The Jagged Edge? The yeah, Rugged that was Edge. really fucking hip, yeah. wasn't it? But we went up, because they have an upstairs dining room, yeah, and we were yeah. the only ones up there. And Spooky. there's a few ghosts there. And I asked yeah. the barista, and she spilled. She said it was, it had burned down a couple of times. Yeah. But I mean, all these buildings up here are haunted. The whole vibe here yeah. is haunted. Because yeah. you used to live in Salem. Yeah, yeah. Well, around Salem. I spent a lot of time in Salem. Yeah. So, yeah. like, you said it had that vibe. But yeah. I'm like, Gettysburg anymore... Like, yes, the the military history and the U.S. history is here, but most of the place here now, it's like, it's the paranormal. It's the ghosts. Uh, yeah, I mean, my first instincts are that, like, this place feels spookier than Salem, you know? Yeah. And Salem was cool as shit, you know? But, like, the spookiness had mostly died down over the centuries into just the love of Halloween. Yeah. This place is spooky as fuck. And I love it. Because <laughs> yeah. you're spooky like me, and yeah. it's like... It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, I've been ghost hunting here since I was little. My mom, like, oh, would you come up here ghost hunting? Like, we would always come to Gettysburg because it was so... so nice. It's, like, only two hours away from, like, Harford County, and it's, like, such a nice little, like, ride, and, like, mm-hmm. I was showing you some stuff. I was showing you, like, Mark Nesbitt's Ghost of Gettysburg Place. That place is yeah. closed the weekend because it is a holiday weekend, but, like, that's a cool place to go. That's the original ghost hunting place. So if you're mm-hmm. coming to Gettysburg for a ghost hunt... Go to Mark Nesbitt's Ghost of Gettysburg. That is a plug. They do not sponsor the podcast, but, <laughs> you know, I'm just saying, you know, they're good people. But, yeah. So, but we were there. I definitely felt something when I was up there by myself. Yeah. Like, there definitely was something, but I didn't really read too much into it. And then those annoying kids came in. That's true. So, before we get into watching or bitching about Vanderpump Rules... What, like, so our friend circle, like, yeah. talk about Have Your Grace, talk about doing comedy, talk about Haven, all the stuff that you're involved in. How do we know oh, each other? man. 
Well, you know, most of my friends, most of the friend circle I know, I've known over years and through different chapters in my life. Mm -hmm. You're actually, you know, you and Jenny are the newest friends in my mm -hmm. life. You more than Jenny. But, um, you know, I met you. I swear, I think, I think community... Community comes together, and you know what? Actually, before we get into Vanderpump Rules, there's something I want to say. I spent most of my life really, like, looking up to these phantoms of genius, you know, whether these phantoms of genius were, like, literary, like Robert Anton Wilson, Timothy Leary. Here we go. I know. was waiting for this to happen. Yeah, good. You know, or whether they were, like, musical geniuses, you know, um, like I used to love Outkast and the Beatles, for example. Or or artists, you know, I have a tattoo of uh, Jean Michael Basquiat on my arm. But like when I took the Basquiat, time to my fave. When I took the time to really be like, hmm, let's just assume that there's everybody's much genius here in this small town of Havre Grace as there is anywhere else. I got to see like the real heart of the town, you know? And I, I count that as a blessing that, you know, I decided that if there's magic anywhere in the world it was where I, it was, you know, was where I was. So yeah, so you know, I guess that's where I'd start with in I Happy love Grace. It. I love There's it. There's just so much power there. You know, you can feel the stories mm -hmm. woven into the town. You can feel the people's personality shining through all the things they do. Yeah. You know, I whoever you want me to talk about, I talk about. I love Fez, who's been on your show. No, Fez is amazing. I love Jenny. Jenny's I amazing. Love Stony, I've known Stony. Stony, we're to see him today. He's yeah. a mess. I love you him. You know, I, I love Josh. I've known him almost. As Linnea's much as coming Stony. on. She's gonna be on the next. Linnea, few weeks. Linnea, Linnea, wow, with a queen, with a witch. Because you do a men's circle at Haven. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, sh there's so much for me to talk about. Man, I didn't know I was going to speak. It's a podcast. Quicker. Yeah, I guess so. But don't the people need some sort of like stability of conversation? Well, I mean, it's Vanderpump Rules. Oh, yeah. So we only have... Well, also, they, I mean, they all know how I am. I mean, oh, it's like yeah. I'm here, there, everywhere. But yeah, TikTok I'm also a Gemini, so I know how to like <laughs> give a good interview. A meow. So before we get... So again, not before, but like... What are we drinking? I'm drinking a Mackenzie's Black Cherry Hard Cider. Because in Pennsylvania, you can buy beer and wine in grocery stores. Yeah. That's, that's what are you true. drinking? I'm drinking Sweet Baby Jesus from, <laughs> that's right, Maryland Duclaw Brewing Company. Oh, Maryland I know where they're at. Brewing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. I mean, we're not far from Maryland. I mean, no, people here, I mean, people say Baltimore here. It's true. I heard it. Yeah. But I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. Sweet Baby Jesus. Yeah. Peanut butter stout. Porter. That's true. All right. So, what are your thoughts? Like, is this your first time like doing like a self care retreat, um, like this? I mean, that's good. So, like, this is like your first time doing that, though. But like, this is different. Like, this is yeah, like, yeah, for real. It, it is different. Yeah. Let me get into. Do you mind if I get into that? Yeah. It's fucking for real different because I think a lot of times maybe me I'll speak for myself in this, but. A lot of my adventures were always like in pursuit of some like bullshit fucking woman at the end of the fucking tunnel, you know, like some fucking stupid pot of gold bullshit. But wow. then there's there's some stu there's something that shifts in the brain. I think you know when you're like, oh, actually, this is for me, and you know, this is also for me and my 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 person, Derek. You know, this is for me and like the crew. This is just for the. You know, the pure joy of being alive. And I think when that shift happens, it's a really powerful break. Yeah. You know, in consciousness. Because, like, that's something that, like, you know, yeah, I'm Zenobia, but, like, you've really gotten to know Derek. Yeah, that's and, true. Like, I barely know Zenobia at all. But you do too. I mean, I know of her. I've, I mean, you've I've seen her. her you love her. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's true. So, but no, that's like, that's amazing. So I do this all, like, I always say my happy place is a Hilton Hotel room with Bravo watching, which yeah, is exactly what, what I joy, did. Sir. Yeah. I just made Davey watch two episodes of Vanderpump Rules. <laughs> yeah. And you thought I was addicted. But you, like, Cause you were, you were like, Oh, what's going on here? But, no, but I really don't give a shit. I mean, I'd say that like, I love you so much and I know you, this show is important to you. So I'm going to invest myself in it, you know, for sure. But man, I don't give a shit. <laughs> Which is why I love this. Cause like this is, cause you've never read my thesis. It's on my website, yeah. donatedoncreative.com. But like, this is what this show is what I like based my entire bachelor degree at Towson on. Yeah. Because I compared it to the importance of being earnest and it has all the theatrics and like it takes a little bit to get that. Cause reality television, I say is, 
God, I'm burping because it's fucking black cherry cider. Yeah, fucking black cherry. Uh, you were cider. burping like a trucker too. Dude, I know. I don't know when to drink beer. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I'll get another but, one here. Oh well. Oh but, well. Like I always say, reality television is a relatively newer media, but there's a lot of like capitalistic play in, that's happening True. with it. And a capitalistic conversion into political theater yeah. that's happening with it that people don't understand. Whereas someone like me is watching this and I'm like, you want to understand like our country? You want to understand our politics? Watch a show like Vanderpump Rules. because But we actually kind of ha- got into this before we started podcasting because you said that people, like media makes people, but I think it's a give and take relationship. That's why I told you to, to like put a pin on that because yeah. I was like I feel like it's give or take because people there are people that watch Vanderpump Rules that aspire to be them and then there's people like me normally intellectuals they watch it and they watch it to kind of be like I don't want to be like these people I don't want to be like Jax Taylor I don't want to be like DJ James Kennedy and that's kind of what happened to me because like I was telling you I had a big catharsis you can read about it in my first book but it's like I was acting a lot like Jax Taylor and like James Kennedy and then seeing the bullshit on the TV I was like oh I need to really change myself I need to like work that shit out work that toxic trade out and like I ha- I did a complete 180 and it was watching this trashy reality show, which is where I'm like, that's like powerful and yeah. like that's spiritual. Yeah. And, and it's kind of like this give or take because it's like, it, it depends on what you get out of it. Yeah. I mean, that's a totally valid experience. Um, would you, what would you like me to like just you, comment on it? Oh, yeah. Sure. The, I mean, it's a, it's a conversation. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I know. But like, so it is a conversation and I'm glad you got that much meaning from it. My experience of, these types of shows is they've really, firstly, we can't really say it's a give and take relationship because these kinds of forms of media are controlled by like two or three companies. Oh, yeah. Well, so this is NBC Universal. Yeah. So they're producing things, you know, with an agenda. No, I mean, it definitely and, like, I mean, yeah. there's six, I always say and, there's six white dinosaurs that sign all the checks in Hollywood and they all, you know, CBS, NBC Universal, yeah. Warner, like all them. And they all like go back to some weirder spot like Clear Vision or Black Rock or some yeah. weird shit. Well, Black Rock's a finance company. <laughs> yeah, but they finance. I mean, I don't know. No, that's very I, true. I don't really understand how it all works. It's just a big fucking Hydra, you know, and you, <laughs> you cut one head off and two grow. But th- not to get into any conspiracies, that would obviously not well, make me look we, I, I do go down with some. My, I do have <laughs> my favorite conspiracy. But there is, like, conspiracy theories about I like, mean, Vanderpump Rules. All I can say is, like, watching that show, what I would like to say is that when I watch that show, I can understand why so many people have difficulties having um, focused, in-depth conversations where they're emotionally vulnerable mm-hmm. and achieve some sort of... Um, you know, common vision because a lot of times I think those shows are sequenced through the lens of a lot of narcissistic people and a lot of cutscenes, you know, so and then a lot of people explaining what happened. So it's like, wow, like no mm. one's ever really talking. It's just like little sound bite followed by little sound bite. Yeah. Well, I little, mean it's edited. They yeah. take down like I mean they they're filming for twelve hours straight and then boiling it down to a fifteen minute scene. Yeah, where they're taking sure. like a two hour dinner date and boiling it down to like three minutes. Yeah, I mean that's that's certainly true. But, but also, I, I, I mean, but looking at that, I have to assume that these people don't communicate very well because oh fuck, yeah, no. judging from their fuck yeah. No. So I have to assume that like you know, it's not just the editing that makes <laughs> the communicating so poor. It's also that these people lack foundational skills. Oh yeah, to creating like you know healthy communication. But that's and the thing about Vanderpump Rules that I love so much is because. Like, my favorite reality shows have always been the ones with the dark subtext. This has the darkest subtext of them all. And they are narcissistic. They are very emotionally stagnant. They are very, like, they need therapy. They need stuff. And it all, but they also, like, production plays into that and edits them and, and like, highlights yeah. them. So, because yeah. you're watching it, I mean, you were watching with Sheena, you know, mm-hmm. you got to meet Sheena, who, like, talks like this, blah, 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 and mm-hmm. with the big nails. But I mean, she is very narcissistic and she is very much like she has this, this, they, and they all have that. They all want to get married, have kids, live in a house. They have, that's like their, their goalposts. And it's yeah. like, that's the only thing. Yeah. Yeah. Very valid. You know, yeah. like one, one mentality of success kind of people. Yeah. And we saw that because on the episode we saw, we saw this woman who'd been cheated on, 
you know, acting like she was so fucking heartbroken. And Britney, yeah, and, Kentucky you know, Muffin, yeah, Brit- yeah Kentucky Rotten Muffin. Hail Jacks, yeah, yeah. You know what are you going to say to that kind of stuff? There's a lot but, more stuff that. But goes. the thing is, I was like, this was their. This is season six. This was like your first time. This is not the first time that that happened. Yeah, I'm sure she came on the middle of season three or four. Yeah, and I mean. He's cheated before. They've had the most toxic relationship Once ever. A cheater, oh. Yes, and Jax no, has kidding. cheated. I no, mean, the whole season two you arc was. You can change, David yeah. Calico. You can change. <laughs> I mean, but you have changed. Yeah, for sure. You know. I mean, things. I think yeah, like you yeah. are pretty emotionally intelligent. Yeah, I, I think I had to be. You know, and actually, that's one of the reasons I connected so well to Jenny because yeah. you know, me and her like same age bracket, and we've been just through so many like literally like. God sent traumatic experiences yeah. that force us to evolve because, well, like, yeah. I mean, I f- f- I hear that. Yeah, but. for real. Like, and it's weird to count our blessings for that kind of stuff. But when I look at some people who just haven't mm. changed, I think. But it's also, I find it's like I could tell when you first started watching it yeah. that, like, you were watching it the way you're supposed to watch it. Yeah. I could tell it. You were like you're not supposed to like these characters. Yeah, you're yeah. supposed to be absolutely repulsed by them. Mm. And that was happening with you. And I could yeah, tell you're like, that's definitely true. and it, it kind of like you were, you yeah. didn't want to get in the role with the world. And then you were like, I could see it happening. And that made me happy because it's like, that's the way you're supposed to. And I could tell you had the intellect to, to watch a show like this, which is <laughs> no, why I was that's like, sweet. we need to watch this. Yeah, that was very sweet. Thank you for coming. Cause it, it's one of those things where you're like, wait a minute, this is like, I don't know. It's, I love it. I mean, I've watched the show front to back probably three or four times. I've, um, I don't know. I mean, I, my thesis was on it. Yeah. Like it's, it's and like there's so much you. more to it. And Vanderpump Rules is so, I don't know. It's so ingrained in my life. Yeah, and it's like I mean, I that's, still watch it. That's the cool thing about you, you know. Yeah. Like they, you I'm know, a Vanderpump Rules scholar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How fucking rad, man! But I mean, that's like You're that's like, some like badass shit. Yeah, so. absolutely. That's cute. But um, pump rolls so like before we get into it, am I am I timed right now? How much more time do I have? No, check? you're not. T- I okay. was just seeing if I just was checking the level. Am I boring you? No, no. I just <laughs> I'm, I'm I periodically have to check it to make sure okay. it, like it's actually recording. Yeah, that and makes I want to check the sound levels. Okay. All right, ad break. I gotta pay for all this damn coffee I'm drinking and tea I'm spilling. It's me, Zenobia, darling. So as many of you know, I'm more than just a podcaster, stand-up comic, and drag queen. I'm also a very accomplished painter and photographer, and you can check it all out on ZenobiaDarlingCreative.com. I have an art blog on there sponsored by the Harford County Cultural Arts Board. And just all my paintings, photography, you get podcast stuff. I have an art film that premiered in September that you can buy on there, too. So make sure you check it out. It supports me, supports the podcast. All right, so let's get back to the podcast. (laughs) (laughs) no joking so i wish you'd let me bring weed i you could have Uh, you discouraged me i mean you this is no smoking hotel yeah i will leave this in i'm just saying the weed part oh man i mean they know we smoke weed no we smoked in the car no we smoke weed i didn't smoke in the car I mean, it's all good. Okay, so let me just get some like episode shit out. It's Vanderpump Rules. We I had you watch season six, episode one and two. This aired, it was shot in the summer of 2018, and I believe aired late 2018, 2019. So this is a very interesting world. Like, it's LA. It's, I don't know. And like, have you been to LA? Like, is LA... I'm just... Just once, no, but twice for a few okay. days here and there. So, what are your thoughts on LA? Like, I don't really know LA that well. I mean, it seems, it seems kind of bougie. Um, I, I you would love LA. Well, I love Have It Grace. Knowing you, yeah, you would love it. That might be true, but I love Have It Grace, and that's where we live. And I know that's Have It Grace really well. No, but LA well, seems cool. Yeah. There's lots of vegan restaurants. Yeah, because you're a proud you know, vegan. Because I'm a proud vegan. Mm-hmm. I don't you made know about me buy proud. soup because it wasn't vegan. Today. Yeah, I did make you buy the soup. Even though you it's know, vegetarian. I got to be honest. Can I tell you a quick story? Yeah, about go ahead. Somebody asked me the other day about how I became vegan. and it hit How me. did you? It hit me the other day. 
Well, see, I've been vegetarian because I ran a meditation group, and I was like the spiritual father, and the spiritual mother was vegetarian, so I went vegetarian. And then I went through a period of my life where I got kind of crazy, and I foreclosed the house. And when I did that... I love this story. <laughs> that's so, like, And that's the thing. This is like... It's Vanderpump Rules, but it's like... Yeah, a yeah. Baltimore version. Yeah, like, that's, that's some true. Vanderpump shit. Yeah, no, it was very European, like, squatting style. I love it. Suits and, it's, and both Scott, uh, Stoney and Josh knew me in, in this chapter of my life. And so, um, so I invited my two anarchist friends to come over and squat with me, you know. Oh my God. And they were both vegans. And the thing was, at the time, like, I could handle both of them in conversation because it's really easy to ignore one valid viewpoint. You know what I mean? All you have to do is like turn your ears away and be like, whatever, I'm making my choice. (laughs) But when there's two people making totally valid, logical arguments about like, you know, promoting health and the the health and the safety of the body and the morality, then it's hard to ignore. And so I think I just got like Mm -hmm. unknowingly just like double teamed by vegan ethics while I was squatting in my house. I love How long have you been vegan? Uh, Nine years as of Halloween. Excellent. So like... Did you have, when you were like, so nine years ago when you started becoming vegan, did you have like a detox or like, what was that experience like? Like when you made the shift, like, did you have like, like digestive shifts? Did you have body shifts? Like, um, no, I mean, I have a kind of a guy's guy's stomach in the sense that like, I just have a really solid stomach Mm -hmm. usually. Um, my big thing was. I would eat Chipotle pretty much every day because they have a really good, yeah, really good bean burrito with guacamole. Super healthy. You still eat a lot of Chipotle. I do, not as much as I used to. Well, it's not the nearest ones in what Bel Air. Yeah, yeah, and and I also would go to Indian restaurants a lot, which I still also enjoy because they do vegan really well. And then I would have a couple like standby meals all the time. For example, like apples and peanut butter. Like never a wrong time for that, you know, or like a good dark chocolate bar. Like really takes away any meat cravings, you know. And so these do little you still have meat cravings? No, no, it doesn't even like doesn't even register as food to me. Okay. to be honest, because I so that's every once in a while I get like a hankering for like, like I want a steak. No, no, not a steak. More like more weird stuff. More like man, I really want a soft shell crab. <laughs> like, Ooh, yeah, I know soft shell crabs are the bomb. My mom used to make the best. Okay, well, see, crabs. that's like also like. That's something that I struggle with veganism is because, like, with my mom, like, I grew up, like, with her, like, cast iron steaks and her hamburger yeah. helper. So For there's, real. like... Culture. There's, like, a, yeah, there's, like, a love yeah. aspect to it where, like, if mm-hmm. I am missing my mom, I go and cook hamburger helper. Yeah. But it's not, sure. like... I say hamburger helper, like, yeah, I grew up, like, white trash in, like, <laughs> Baltimore. But, like, it was more of, like, my mom knew how to, like, upgrade it to be really good. And, yeah. like... You know, there's something, and like, you know, my mom's a pothead, and she always has her bowl in her mouth, and like, I always say, like, she'll she'll be like cooking the steaks, and she's like lighting the bowl because you know, and it's like I always say, some of the weed falls in, and that's what makes it good. But it's like, like that's part of me. Like, I've been, I don't know if I would go full vegan, but I definitely have like vegan days. Yeah, yeah. But like, I also know that if I go to my mom's house and she's cooking steak, I'm not not gonna eat that because yeah. it's like. Yeah, you know. for sure. I mean, you know, and the ethics are, you know, they're not really white and black, just, mm-hmm. you know, despite what vegans, some vegans think. Yeah. You know, but I do think there's some merit to evaluating the lifestyle choices we make and to, you know, crafting the ones that create health for me and for the people around me. Yeah. I mean, like, so when you were switching over, like, like, if you were to have, like, say you went to a coffee shop yeah. and you always order, like, almond milk, oat milk, like a vegan milk alternative, if they accidentally put 2%, what would happen? I feel like because you haven't had dairy in a while, I feel like it would instantly give you the shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, just to go back to, like, you know, there's a saying. I think Steve-O said it. If you're going to be... You mean Steve-O from Jackass? Yeah, yeah. I love him. Yeah, love he's him. really good. Chris, you know, if you're going to be dumb, you got to be tough. Yeah. You know, and I definitely think that there's some... There's some truth in that in my life where I've just done enough like reckless, intrepid things that I've just learned to I like. I love it. Yeah, yeah. I just learned to be like, all right, everything's going to, like, there's going the body has a backup plan. Yeah. You know? But I mean, like, yeah, you seem, I mean, you're like healthy, you're fit, yeah. you're sexy. Like, thanks. I will keep thanks. that it's, out. But, like, no, no, you can keep it in. You know, it's, it's good yoga, it's daily meditation, you know, and lots of friends. You, you do know? have lots of friends. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, it's like, I don't know, because it's day after Thanksgiving, and, like, I kind of, like, pieced out of Thanksgiving with my family. Yeah, yeah. And, like, I'm not going to say on mic what happened, but, like, 
you know, I kind of was, I was with my cat and then like I saw you, Josh, Davey. No, I'm Davey. You're Davey. So I had <laughs> you, Josh, and Stoney. I saw oh you guys and like Radha so and Krishna funny. and I yeah. was like, this is my the family. family. Yeah, I'm like, these fam. are my, these are my yeah. bros. Love like your fam. Let's go. I'm like, <laughs> you know, it's like, and I love that have that community. And then it's like, the extended community, yeah, like within sure. half a degree. Yeah, it's, like Katie, Fez, you yeah. know, like Jared, Jenny, Lexi, yeah, Jenny. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then, like, when we were, when I was recording with Jenny, like, it'll be edited out, but like, you know, Ashley and Lee Schaefer, like, just knocked on the door and stopped by. I don't even know who they And are. they, um, like, in town, and it's like, they knew me, we knew, but oh. we never met. And it's like stuff like that that I love yeah. about half a degree. Yeah, it's like, sure. we all know each other. We all have like a common vibe. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, like, man what a blessing it is to like find magic where we live yeah. you know and we do real. yeah because it's there you know because we're there but that's what's like i know I, i'm always going to be har- like anchored in harford county and there's yeah. nothing like like today like we just were shooting the shit for like an hour before we before we i you know drove to Gettysburg. i know it's so like spontaneous too mm. you know like i didn't invite stony over yeah, yeah and then i, I saw invite. on facebook where like Josh, Josh and him went and saw Jenny. Yeah, for And they sure. went shopping. I know, they were just really cute photos. They did. Yeah. We took cuter photos. Uh, yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> With fewer clothes. Well. <laughs> just kidding. Just well, kidding. I mean, you are in a Versace robe. I know, this robe is tight. Yeah. yeah. Oof. All right. So let's get back to Vanderpump Rules. So, like, I don't know if I already asked this. What are your initial thoughts watching the show? I mean, it's like, you know, it really, like... I named out Terrence McKenna earlier. I did that kind of purposely because he says, I don't know the exact words, but like culture is poison. You know what I mean? Like a lot of American culture is poison. Mm-hmm. And this is po- this is specifically like celebrity pop culture, yeah. like yeah, gossip, yeah. And, you know, tabloid if you culture. Have, you know, we all have we all have our poisons in our lives. Like mm-hmm. I certainly have mine, you know. And if you find meaning and value What is in some it, of your poisons? My poisons? Um, for sure, any kind of psychedelic substance. That's not poison, that's medicine. Uh, that is medicine. Okay, how about some, like, I have some spiritual elitism that I always work I mean, you try, I mean, you you occasionally like a good cigarette. Yeah, yeah, that is true. I do, I too. Do. Yeah, the, every once in a while, I do I like do a too. good cigarette. So, like, the ladies. What about the la- The ladies. With the ladies. Which ones would you hook up with? On Vanderpump Rose? Yeah. Dude, I don't know their names. The the, the blonde was cute, though. But the, with the Ariana? Ariana? The really like kind of ditzy looking blonde. Did she have like the really angular bob? Yeah, she was cute. Yeah, okay, that's sure. Ariana. You like Stassi? Is she the one that was having like she was having that dinner with Patrick? I think I like both the girls. You I could, yeah, about. I could see. Yeah, because Katie's so. gross. I could see you and Dodie having a thing because like I've noticed this with you. Like really crazy girls are like <laughs> attracted to you. Yeah, like peanut butter and jelly. Yeah, and yeah. it's like Davy and, and she's crazy. a vegan. Oh, and she's has a man, personality vegans disorder. Vegans are crazy, man. Vegans, who? And it's like, no, she's not vegan and be having a personality disorder, not one in the same. Well, I'll tell you what. There seems to be like a high correlation from my from my <laughs> limited dating from my what do they call that? My um, not objective, subject, not subjective. Your subconscious? No, no, no. When they say like from my like personal experience. <laughs> I found, you know, I found correlation. I'll say that much. Okay. Between. No, that's amazing. Well, you know, I well, think I, I the mean, vegan thing, it's like, it's an identity marker. You yeah. know, whenever you find people firmly entrenched around identity markers. Mm-hmm. Oh, Chris, I'm a vegan. And then like, yeah, yeah, the, for and, sure. that, and I, she's the one I do like, cause I do in like, I don't do the comedy sets in, in Harford County. Yeah. Like van- with pop culture because no one here gets pop culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when I was doing comedy in like LA, like I'll do Vanderpump stuff and I can do impressions of most of them. But yeah. like, you know, because she, she kind of talks like this and she got nails and she's like, oh my God, don't let me on my right side of my face. Like she's kind of crazy. And then like Dodie, she, you kind of got a little bit of it because she was not really in these episodes. But the one line she did say when, because I had him watch this episode where Jack's fucked Faith at the masquerade party and it just like the first thing you see is Chris and go up to Jackson's like you fucking son of a bitch I'm gonna cut your balls off like cause she's nuts like that like she's yeah. nuts but yeah. I could see I could see you guys having wild sex and she's that's another thing about Kristen she like loves to get fucked on like the hood of a car in a parking garage she like Jack's fucked her while watching Drive while Tom Sandoval was in the other that was, room that was a good movie yeah, well, yeah, that was a good she, movie. It, it was a good movie for her too. Well, I hope so. But yeah, so I could see you two definitely, especially a, yeah, just knowing you, I'm like I, you and Kristen would have. I don't know. I've got. We'll have like a two weeks. Old age. I'm like, I'm, 
a mellow kind of cuddly kind of guy. No, you're a cat. <laughs> you're a kitten. You're a little meow. Kitten. Meow. He's so sweet to me. So Derek. what do you? <laughs> so what do you think about the whole Jack's cheating thing? I I mean it's hard to say because. I don't. That guy Jax seems like a douche, right? Oh, he totally yeah, is. Yeah, for sure. He's like but a big like, dumb ape. Also, like you know me, and like the whole like monogamy thing is the biggest marker of love. Seems to be super fucking toxic. Yeah. And the way everyone reacted to like this guy cheated, bum bum bum. You know, like like what the fuck? But it's not the first time he cheated. That's yeah. the crazy part. It's like yeah. they all. Yeah, like, like they all know it and accept it. Yeah. It's like. like but they saw like shocked. And like getting back to like my thesis and like the actual like breaking down the reality show theater of this show, like they it works because it's an old Aristotle theater technique where they all are enemies on the pursuit of this aspirational life. So when two enemies do disastrous deeds to each other, it reads as comedy. So that's why the show's a comedy. Uh, so it's like hmm. they all are making fun of it, uh, but he's also doing horrible things to hor- other horrible people. Oh, that's interesting. So you kind of watch it. Like, cause I could tell you were laughing a part of it. Like, like they're all trying to sort of get up, one up on each other so they can win. Oh, yeah. Not realizing like the show is sort of, or maybe they do realize that the show is about like petty people. Pretty much. Petty. Yeah. Well, it's a docu-soap. Yeah. So like, in, did you ever watch like any soap operas? Like, what was the media you watched as a kid and like as a teenager? Um, well, I mean, like the thing is, like, so I had a head injury when I was seventeen. And I didn't watch TV after that, you know. So that's kind of like, a, it makes it weird to think about my experience in media. But growing up, I would watch um, The Simpsons a lot. You know, that's a very. I can see you watching The Simpsons. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> you know, I watched Friends. Some um, I watched. Did you watch any like reality shows? Like, did you watch? I, the I Real watched World? a little bit of Real World. Which yeah. what, which episodes? Like, were what season? What cities? Um, gosh, I don't remember. I really don't remember. It okay. would have been like, like somewhere like before five to seven. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah for sure. Some pre pre two thousand. Yeah, because like I, I'm in over your house many times. You don't have a TV. No, that's true. No TV. Like you don't. You yeah. write a lot. I do write a like, lot. It, a it's bit. very nice because it's nice. To, I can go there and like kind of like check out you don't even have wi-fi which yeah, i love yeah you go to coffee shops yeah it takes people a while to adjust to it but like i i like that thanks i appreciate it but yeah like, but i mean also i've been over i can bring over a projector real easily yeah yeah and you bring over I, by the way i think you left one of your little flare lights it's over it's oh i did a, yeah i, I so. love it i was on the yeah, rave it was a disco night yeah yeah we have disco nights yeah. we have fun <laughs> yeah, yeah that's the kind of fun stuff that happens when you don't have a tv <laughs> <laughs> so like I think you, because I made you do a face mask. Which yeah. face mask? How'd you feel about the face mask? Dude, it was cool. Your I face, like it, it, it like, it even the, uh, it evened like, your skin tone. Yeah, and it made it like, off. it like perked you up a little bit. Yeah, like, I was kind of sleepy there for a minute, you know yeah. what I'm, I'm I can tell you're sleepy now. I mean, yeah, it I'm is, still kind of sleepy. It's getting, it's almost 11. But, but I'm, uh, no, but I'm tough though, you know, I'm here. You're tough. Yeah, you're tough. yeah. Well, I mean, we've already been talking for a half hour. Really? So that's why so much fun. That's why I'm like, it's, yeah. So, like, I think you were washing it off, like, when the big revelation came where, like, Faith went into how, like, Jack sh- and her had sex. So, I wouldn't call it a big revelation. I would say I honestly didn't it's care. It's the level of depravity. Well, how did they have sex? So, Faith was a home I a feel home like I just went back when saying nurse. I didn't care. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Home and, hospice nurse, yeah. yeah and... Jax came over and fucked her while she was taking care of a 96 or 94 year old woman on a ventilator in the same room. She videotaped it. And then on the audio production. So this, I've heard this through like the the reality TV, like production thing. They couldn't air it because it violated HIPAA law because you can hear the woman moaning and her breath and her ventilator in the the sex audio. You know, I feel like that's trashy as fuck. But rather than take the time to like talk about how trash it is, I want to go ahead and just make a statement that I think it's good for people to spend more energy connecting with the older generations. Okay, <laughs> I love how that's what you got out of it. Huh. Yeah, that's fucking sicko, man. Isn't Actually, that? That's the, although, but that's honest, why it's like older it's... people might enjoy it. Like some some older people, they really love you know that kind of like the voyeuristic. Well, just the 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 like the rush of life and energy, yeah. you know, which is I think why older people. I mean, she was like on, she was dying. She was in hospice. Yeah, and like probably had a morphine suppository and like on a ventilator, unconscious. Yeah, I know. Which which you know in the 
transmigration of the soul is yeah. prime time to be very like I mean respectful. I th- but I also think like with hospice, I think they need to give people like psychedelic drugs. Yeah. Because it helps sure. the dying yeah. anxiety and it kind yeah. of Yeah, no, I you know, I used to my mom passed from dementia and I actually tried to get her to do mushrooms with me. It's actually uh, this is really edge pushing for me. I actually wrote a joke about it in my next comedy set. Do the I, joke. Well, I don't are you sure? Well, I mean, you don't have to, but like, that's cool that you're doing it. So, like, I just sit down. We can. Okay. All right. You don't got to do it. All right. That's right, people. You won't hear it unless you come to the well, state theater. Yep, you got to come to the state Thursday, theater. Third Thursday <laughs> in December. But I mean, that's like very profound because, like, getting back to comedy, like, you, you've you been doing stand up comedy. I've been mentoring you. You have. Yeah. You're I've like been mentoring my, you're you like and my comedy Stony. mama. Yeah. I yeah, am. Yeah. Well. I mean, <laughs> who's your mama? Who's my mama? <laughs> Kathy Griffin and Jennifer. <laughs> but um, but like, yeah. I mean, you you've definitely developed as a stand up comic, and I love it. And like, but I will say, I wouldn't have expected you to think about that. Just talking about Jackson Faith. <laughs> What's that? Oh, just the, the so just like, like the the yeah. Whole thing. yeah like that's why I love yeah. it because you look out for the older generations, people. Yeah, but I mean that ugh, I love it. Yeah. So like, what what's your favorite part of doing comedy? Um. I just like leaning into my edge. It's honestly like 100% for me. Yeah. And on, like I say it's for me and in combination with that, it's it's a testament to my connection to, with you. Mm. And it's a testament to my connection with Stoney. Mm. But it's really just for me to like pay attention to the world around me and put it together in a clever story and kind of create like illusions throughout, mm. you know, it's, it's like a fun puzzle that I get to play every yeah. month, you know, and, and that's like, pretty much, you're definitely using that. And like the slam poetry, at yeah. Gallery twenty, you definitely been using that as therapy. Yeah. And I that. think it's like, I think that's a really beautiful thing. Thank you. Yeah. Cause like stand up comedy is my therapy. Yeah. It's a lot cheaper too. Yeah. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you have good insurance. So. Yeah, yeah, I know, but it's still though. Your I, human job give, affords you good insurance. My, my, my person, my yeah. legal name, <laughs> which will never be. I know what it is. <laughs> I'm, I'm one of the lucky few. All right. So then, so then getting back to it, what did you think about the overall, like the men on the show? Yeah. I mean, they were kind of like generic guys. They were, Damn. they seemed like they were, firstly, they seemed like they were all sort of like beta to the older woman. You know what yes. I mean? Like the real alpha was the older woman. Yes. You know, like those guys. Lisa Vanderpump is, yeah. 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 I mean, there was some interesting moments of like, probably the closest intimacy I saw on that show was between those two Tom guys. And Tom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was, well, I mean, that's the best part. Like, because there is like such a gay subtext, yeah, and like you picked up on that, and yeah, you were like, "Wait a minute, are they dating?" And it's like, <laughs> no, but that's like, I just find that so fascinating because like they all have the gay subtext. I mean, yeah. J.J. James Candy has it, Jax Taylor has it, and then the Toms. I mean, you basically saw them like cuddling and like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was crying very crying with each other. Yeah, yeah. Of course, he's he was on an all day bender. I mean, you could tell he was fucked up. Yeah. What drug do you think that was? I, he was I honestly, crying. I thought that was Adderall. I, I pretend like I know. I don't know a lot of drugs, so your guess would be that's very true. My, yeah, You're, that's very true. I, I know a few really well. I mean, <laughs> well, also like the dr- you don't do drug. Like you're more medicine. Yeah, like yeah, that's I don't true. consider weed, mushrooms, and LSD really like that's, that's drugs. Good. That's I consider good. drugs like I, opioids. Also, just so you know, I don't do LSD anymore. I don't either. I don't okay. like it. Yeah, like, no, I liked it for the a time. thing that makes me mad about it is like mushrooms only last like what four to six hours. Yeah. LSD lasts for like twelve. Yeah, so yeah. So like you take it at eleven it's a p.m. Wild at night. Movie. Yeah, you're you know it's four yeah. a.m. You <laughs> want to go to bed, and here's you still on this merry-go-round, and you're like, I'm done. Yeah, yeah. That was that was a few nights. Yeah. When's the last time you did that? Um, that had been over. That had been at least like eight years ago. Yeah. Ten years ago, probably at this point. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, you still do mushrooms though. Yeah, I yeah. can tell when you're on mushrooms too. <laughs> yeah, because well, you can feel the the ninjas coursing through my body. Ooh, the ninjas, the ninjas. That's oh, right. They came into my house and stole everything I owned. <laughs> and if you're not good, Zenobia, darling, oh, I come. am very good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I love the ninjas. <laughs> God, how long have we we've been doing this for? Like forty minutes. This is already like a decent, a really decent episode. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm having fun. Yeah. So, like, what's your favorite? Like, I don't know, because a lot of them are vegan. Who's my favorite person? Like so far, so I really don't know. I mean, like these people are just like these these clay golems that like get dressed up. Um, who's my favorite human? I'll tell you what. I they, mean, who's your favorite human on the show? Mm, give me a second. No, nope, don't care. 
I think that's amazing. <laughs> so you're just like, I don't. Yeah. Like, like, I, I love how I you're didn't like. didn't connect to any of them, to be honest. Like, like I love how you're like removed from it. Yeah. Yeah. It just seems like totally alien to me, you know, yeah. in some ways. But that's why I had you watch it. Cause I knew there would be, there would be something like to, that you would get out of it. Yeah. I mean, the emotional like subtext was really riveting, mm-hmm. you know, like have, have you read the Harry Potter books? Yes. You know, like I'm not a Harry Potter person. That's though. a shame. They're written in such a... I don't a, like fiction. It's, it's your attention span, isn't it? To be a honest. little bit. Okay. Well, I don't mean to take a shot. I know. Oh, gosh. I'm so sorry. No, you're fine. Well, no, I'm also dyslexic, so like, I like yeah. books read to me. Yeah. But like, I think because I make my own fiction, even yeah. though a lot of my stuff is not fiction, you know, I write plays. I have two books out. I, you know, I write stuff and it's like I prefer like reality and I prefer like documentaries mm-hmm. and like nonfiction. Yeah. Last book I read was on oh god. I don't I forgot I think it was on Van Gogh. Hmm. An artist. Actually I do want I know what I want to I want to talk about Basquiat with you. Because uh. Basquiat is he's like my number one painting idol. Yeah. You know, you have several of my paintings. I do. It's you true. have a I'm special blessed. one in your bathroom. That's true. I do. That I right. love looking at every time. Every time you go touch your penis. Yep. Every time I pee in your bathroom, <laughs> I get so to see fun. my penis on a wall. That's nice. Yeah. I mean, that's a. I will say that was a fun pop art thing. Yeah, it was really cool. For yeah. Sure. It's got Madonna on it too. It does have Madonna. Yeah. I love it. But like, what what are your thoughts on Basquiat? Like, what is it about him that you love so much? Because like, he's my idol. Like, yeah. he's punk rock. He is has a very narrative painting style. It's very storytelling. It's gritty it's raw it's uncolonized i love yeah. it well i mean thanks for asking me you know it's i guess thinking i haven't thought about this so i'm just talking off the cuff i mean but if you take a minute like no think no, about no. It. I'm, I'm ready to go right now in this moment i was ready with an answer <laughs> i don't know where it came from but it came from some no i come out of your ass <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. you know i think one of like the ultimate questions that modern humans are struggling with is what the fuck are we doing here Oh, you know, yes. like we've had this like wild, like, you know, patriarchal ego for, and, and I don't mean to say it's patriarchal. Like, oh, like we have to go with, yeah, work we have to, to buy more. And, yeah. Buy more and collect make more, more money, make yeah. more. Yeah. And do more, you know, and it's, it, it just is stacked up to such a point that everything feels meaningless, you know? And so what, and so I guess my, my, my turning to Basquiat is like, what is meaningful? And he brought to me, when I saw his art and the two vegans who got me to go, the two anarchists. Always back to the vegans. The who vegan, got me to go vegan. They, the they vegan got me anarchy. to Basquiat. But, you know, taking really like street art, graffiti was how it was seen at the time. Mm. And you I, know, mean, I, I mean, I remember I've, I was into Basquiat. Like, I remember I was, God, I was like 12 or 13. And my grandmother took me up to New York for like an art. Cause we would do like art weekends once a year. Yeah. And we were in MoMA or the, or the other museum of one of them. And they had an exhibition on him. And uh, my grandmother was like, you fell in love with it. And I remember coming back and telling people, I love this painter Basquiat. I remember people in the art community, like art teachers were like, he's not a real painter. Like you need to study oh, the that's masters. That's so fucking gross. Yeah. Like you need to study more master. He's not a master. And I'm like, he is a master. Like he's neo expressionism is a very valid art form. Yeah. And it was like, you know, look at, but I mean, you go back and I'm, I've seen that style is also in an old school Van Gogh. It's in Monet. It's in so many other. Well, you did a really profound exhibit at the the show, the art gallery. Oh, gallery yeah, tutorial. Yeah, yeah. The cave art, you know, and how how Basquiat mm-hmm. that looked at yeah. was like, you know, modern cave art. Yeah. As Basquiat, as like, let me repurpose these symbols. Yeah. Let me repurpose these, like, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, a lot of people like space, like. I purposely put in a lot of spirituality in it. And I purposely put in, it was un, it was raw and con- it had a lot of social critique because it was, it was a really dark piece, but I wanted some like spirituality in it. And there was a lot of it. And there was a lot of paranormal mythology, which I know you're big into. And like, that was all gotten and which I loved. So, cause you were there yeah. at the opening. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I love it. I love being and I part mean, of it. And you have two paintings that are very neo-expressionism. Yeah, for sure. At least two. I mean, two of yours. Yeah. Yeah. But probably, I mean, I also did the one with you. Yeah. You know. 
That one yeah. was cool. What's the mythology behind that one? That was that it's was the, the demiurge. Demi- yeah. yeah. And so um in Gnostic Christian Gnostic thoughts, the the church, like the the big Roman Catholic mm-hmm. church is the false church run by the false god. Thou shalt not have any god but me. Mm-hmm. This is just a a projection of the human ego into the divine space and that's known as the demiurge. Mm-hmm. So, you know, in Gnostic Christianity the the Yahweh is a demiurge, it's mm-hmm. a false creator God. In the same way that in the Matrix, the the designer of the Matrix was this flawed egotistical guy. You know, or like even in Star Wars, Darth mm-hmm. Vader, the father, was like the false father, you mm-hmm. know. Like Ooh. this yeah, this mythos it's embedded throughout. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I love how you brought a Star Wars reference into it. Yeah, I actually don't even know much about Star Wars. I don't either. (laughs) It's not mythology. But I mean, like, I love that. Like, so, like, have you seen, like, have you been to any art exhibits where there actually are Basquiat's? Have you seen one of his works in real life? I've never seen it really. I think that's going to be our next, like, vacation or, like, trip away because. Well, I might. Have, I went to Pittsburgh. Do, do they have any in the Andy Warhol one? Museum in Pittsburgh? No, but I don't think they have. They have photography. Yeah. No, I think they do have one of his. I think it's a collaboration with him and Warhol. Well, if if I saw it, it would have been before I was in the basket. But so I might need to the Andy Warhol it. Museum in Pittsburgh, like yeah. I went there with my ex boyfriend, like in college. Too powerful as fuck. All my I, Candy Darling, Robert Maplethorpe, Keith Haring, Andy Warhol, like. Hollywood lawn. My, I went there and I was like, these are all my artistic family. Like, yeah. it was crazy. That's cool. But like, that'd be fun to go. But the thing about Basquiat that I think I, that I don't think people get about him and like, yes, he's influenced my art a lot. What he influences the most is I study celebrity and fame. Yeah. yeah and that's true, I'm yeah. very Warholian. And he was the first celebrity artist. He took Warholian theatrics and made himself into a celebrity artist. Mm. And that's something that has been, that's probably my number one influence from him. Yes, I paint like him, but I also steal from that. And most people have no clue about that. Like like you use the context Mm -hmm. he used to frame himself as an artist and use that like sort of picture in the same way. Yeah. Yeah, Like he was like, he was a Warholian superstar. Yeah. And almost like a little bit of a drag version of himself, like a a personified version of himself, which is very reality show acting. It's very, it's that Warholian celebrity, but he was that as one of the first artists to do that. Yeah. And that's, I mean, cause you saw the art film, you were there at the premiere. Yeah. That was great. What did you think about that? I thought it was I thought it was really good. And you did a good job of weaving together. Katie did a really good job of weaving together the themes, in particular like your fascination with Disney villains and you know I the do expo- love a di- I do love a Disney villain. <laughs> yeah. And this exploration of, you know, gender space not as a way of like like, oh, this is all female empowerment, you know, but like also just as like sort of like playful embodiment space you know it's sort of a, a witchcraft of sorts and you also got to the occult in it too which i thought was well cool. i mean well, well i was so nervous because like i mean i can talk i can like talk about this with you but like that was the first time i really came out as like a witch Ooh, and like as someone really? that practices witchcraft and is into this stuff wow congratulations and I so i had another beer i do in the fridge cheers. yeah cheers. yeah pause and get it yeah. yeah okay and we're back so like so we had to get a beer, but like that was like the first time like I come out as like as like Man, that's so fucking as like cool. a witch and Dude, like wow, this is someone, I feel like you should be on my podcast and I should be celebrating you for We gotta get you a podcast. Yeah, I don't know if I wanna do it, you know. It's me. I mean it is more work than people yeah. realize, but yeah, I love much, it. No, it's good for you, I think. Yeah. I don't know that it'd be good for me. But if I had a podcast I'd bring you on and I'd interview you about how it feels to come out as a witch. Derek. I mean, I'm not like a, I'm not like a stereotypical no, witch witch. Go ahead and tell me what kind of witch you are. Like, though. I'm more shamanistic witch. Like, yeah, I, but like, I believe that all religion is like, you know, when you go to a Catholic church and they're doing the sage and shit, like, you know, that's witchcraft. They do sage and Catholic yeah, they church? sage in a Catholic. Yeah, I, I didn't know that. Yeah, but I'm like, that's witchcraft. That's all. Like when yeah. you. You know, when people, when the Catholic Church is doing a, an exorcism, that's a form of sp- witchcraft. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's like, so that's why I love these people like who are like, oh, witchcraft, it's devil worship. I mean, and that's something else that I've, I mean, I've gotten that comment before, but I'm, yeah. it's not devil worshiping, but I do know, I do know Satanist. And I will say some of them make a lot of sense. And some yeah, of them are yeah. some of the nicest people you ever it's meet. It's true. It's very And it's true. not what you think. And yet some of the, 
I don't know. I'm, I could go on forever, but it's, <laughs> it is what it is. But I mean, that was like the first time I really, and I was nervous about that. Yeah. Well, whew. I mean, I can understand it. Um, I don't know when, I think I started calling myself a witch when I lived in Salem. And you are a witch. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate you it. You are very witchy. Yeah. Whew. Man, you know, I'll tell you what else. It's really cool at this phase, this chapter in my witchy life to have Stoney and Josh circle back around who've known me over the years and Steve too, who've known me over the years. And like they've gotten to see some of the different chapters of witchiness I've completed and where I am now. Um, I'm getting out of my humility, which isn't a good look. But, yeah, thank you for... What do you mean you're getting out of humility? Well, I mean, you know, no one wants to hear about somebody mm-hmm. talking about, oh, yeah, I'm a I'm a witchy person, you know? Well, that's, you are. Well, thank Like, you. embrace it, because, like, I love it, because, like, that's part of my community. Yeah, for sure. You it's know, like, it's good, yeah, yeah, because we have to make meaning of being yes. here. Yeah, absolutely. And it's like we all, like, yeah. and, you know, like, we all are interested in paranormal. Like, I know that if I yeah. have a paranormal issue ghost hunting and only that like we all ghost hunt together we all like yeah. are interested in the paranormal and the mythology and we do arts and crafts and, and like we yeah. protect mother earth and like for sure all that stuff yeah. so, absolutely absolutely that's yeah. all very valid and it's beautiful all right so my god we've been talking for like we've been talking for about an hour oh my god how do you feel i feel good I'm is this your first time doing a podcast um, I did one. I did a couple with she who shall not be named. Okay, um, <laughs> kind of source, <laughs> kind of source. Yeah, no. I mean, I, I bless her. I hope she's happy. Tell you, she ain't gonna find somebody else like me. But I hope that's she's for happy. that's for sure. <laughs> I hope she's happy. Probably not. I mean, oh man, that's a painful thing to hear. I mean, well, I'm just being real. I'm saying, like, yeah. To be real, I saw her around town. She don't look so hot. But like, honestly. There's times in life I don't look so hot either, and I don't want to be judged yeah. by those, you know. I mean, at the same time, like, like I was like, every relationship's there to teach you something. So, like, like yeah, I feel like you've you've learned lessons from that, and it's time to just move on. Yeah, for sure. I know. Yeah, I feel and like, I feel like you have learned a lot of lessons. Yeah, and, I feel like I'm, and I feel like you're you're growing go. as a human. Yeah, and and blessings for that, man. Whew. I was in that. I was in that stuck space with abusive women for quite yeah. a number of years. Well, I lost a decade different to that shit, yeah. man. But, you know, that's part of the journey. That's what I like about Greek mythology so much. You know, all the Greek sailors, they, they go <laughs> they go off, they fight their wars, and then they come home and they get lost on an island for, like, mm-hmm. years and years Which and I years. Which I love. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh, that makes sense because I lost myself for, like, 10 years. You found there. yourself again. Yeah, I found myself there. All and right, so wrapping up. Wrapping up. I didn't. We've been talking for like an hour. I'm salty. I know, but... You want to keep talking? Well, it's just that I like when you listen to me. I love talking to you, and I love listening That's to you. That's so sweet. So, like, I didn't... So, even though we're drinking, what are you drinking now? This is, um... This is, like, a double chocolate bock. It's really <laughs> good. It's like a dessert beer. I'm good. I got water now. I'm Ooh, like... Wee. So, when you go, so we did go to a coffee shop. It is a coffee break podcast. What is like your Starbucks order, your Dunkin' order? When you go to like, I don't know, Conger Point Coffee or other independent coffee shops that are better than Starbucks and Dunkin', what is your order? I'm like, no, no, no. Come on. I'm not, I don't, I, um, just regular coffee, honestly. Just regular coffee. I think I make the best coffee. I don't think. So w- tell me, t- talk about coffee. It's a co- yeah, it's coffee yeah. well, break. I'm it's like, hashtag Rockstar Life I'm coffee I'm like Quentin break. Tarantino with my coffee, man. I don't need you to tell me how good my coffee is. I'm the one who buys it. I but buy I mean, like, go- but how do you like it? How do you drink it? I, I, t- I what I do is I, I, I use a French press. I okay. grind up whole beans. I grind up my whole beans. What type of beans do you get? I mean, I go to Sprouts and I find the bougie ones, but the ones that are on clearance sale. I so, do love Sprouts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's really good. A, we, that's our favorite thing to yeah, do. Yeah, Friday sprouts. nights. Yeah, D- Derek and I go to Sprouts. Who's Derek? Zenobia. <laughs> Sorry. That's dead. Zenobia's name. your mistress. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I grind up some uh, coffee beans and put them in my French press. And then I did this thing these past couple weeks. I, I'm stopped doing it now, but I put salt in my fucking coffee grounds and then I put water in it. How's that? How is it? That would probably be good. <laughs> yeah, it's it would cut down good. on the bitterness. It just it just dehydrates the fuck out of me. Yeah. Um, and then I put like milk in my coffee cup. I pour the coffee in. What type of milk? Oat milk. You like okay, oat Actually, milk. Yeah. Then I put maple syrup as a sweetener mm-hmm. and a little and a bit of vegan butter, and mm-hmm. I stir it up. It's so good. 
Ooh, that does sound good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really legit. Because I noticed you are a coffee drinker. Yeah. And what is your favorite John Waters movie? Oh. I ask everybody these questions. I haven't so. seen a single John Waters. You yeah, know, you have. I, I really, I, I don't do the media Oh, thing. yeah, that's true. Yeah, I'm sorry. Like, I'm quite familiar with John Waters, who he is. I like Hamden a lot. I like Baltimore a lot. I grew up there, but I don't know any John Waters. Which, which, There's Hairspray is the most favorite. Hairspray is my favorite. Okay. I got to get you to watch Female Trouble. I've never seen Hairspray. What? <laughs> I've never seen Hairspray. I love it. I yeah. do love it. Thank you. So, all right. So with that, yeah. actually, we're going to bed, so yeah. I'm tired. So with that, good night, everybody. Good night, De- Zenobia. <laughs> good night, Davey. <laughs> um, all right. Mwah. All right. Peace out. I'm beaming back up to my UFO. Oh.